Hey, welcome back. So this week's been a fun week in terms of AI. In fact, Google released their new Palm 2 model as part of their Google I.O. conference. And in fact, it's available just now on Google Cloud as part of their Vertex API service. So in this video, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun and hook up to that Palm 2 model and see what it's like. In fact, what we will do is create a TypeScript client that will work with it. Now, why is that a little bit of fun? Because Google has released a Python an SDK for the Palm model, but they haven't released the TypeScript SDK. So for a little bit of fun, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the Palm 2 model to generate the client for us. Anyway, this is gonna be a bunch of fun, so let's get started. Alrighty, so the first thing that we need to do is actually hook up into Google Cloud Service. So if you haven't signed up to Google Cloud before, you're gonna have to do that in advance, and that's okay, you can do that via cloud.google.com. But we're gonna go straight to the Google Cloud Console. In fact, if you wanna get access to the Palm 2 model, you can hit in via Vertex uh, AI service straight away. So I'm going to go to console.cloud.google.com forward slash vertex uh, dash AI. And then if I click that in there, it's going to open up my Google Cloud Console, which you can see on the screen. What we will now do is if you haven't got a project set up already in Google Cloud, you're going to need to create one. Now I do have one there created called Chuck MRE Hello, which I use for another video. Um, but that's okay, we're just gonna create a brand new one. In this case, I'm gonna call create new project and we'll give it something like uh, Chuck uh, Hello Palm, okay? And then we are just gonna then hit the uh, create button and then that will create that brand new project for us. Alrighty, now that that's been created, I can just click on that select project button. I just need to enable that Vertex AI API, so I will just click enable on that, and then that will make it enabled for that project as well. Okay, cool, now let's come back with the enable button. We are good to go, we can start to interact with this. Then I can start playing with the Generative AI Studio. So if we just click on overview there, you can see it's in preview mode, and there's two things you can look at. We can look at speech, but since we're gonna be focusing on Palm 2, and we're gonna be focusing on large language models, we are gonna select the language one. And then as you can see, it's it's a pretty good tutorial. It's got lots of stuff there. It's got kind of a prompt gallery here. So there's lots of examples for you to mess around with. So if you're uncomfortable or you're not sure too much of what you can do with large language models, it's, it's pretty good. You can do things like title generation, so generate a title based on a text, you can do call centers, transcripts, you could do transcript summarization, so there's a lot of kind of summarization, summarizing news articles, so there's a lot of fun for you to play with. So we're gonna just get started. There's two models you can go with. You can use these sort of start a conversation that will via chat, so that's a great chat prompt, or you can uh, use the more sort of uh, design and test your own test prompts. So use the kind of more text completion based one. It doesn't really matter too much which one you use. So if I go to the chat one for a second, it's, it's a bit of a terrible interface there. But if I type in something like hello here, it's gonna come back and say, hello, how can I help you today? And then I can type in something like what is faster? a horse or a duck, which is my favorite question of all time. And then we can click on that and then it's gonna come back with the answer. And there we go, it thinks a horse is faster than a duck and then it gives a whole sort of thing uh, around that. But if I come out of the chat, chat mode and we come back into the kind of uh, create and design your temp test prompts, it's a slightly better interface, uh, not much better. But if I type in the same thing, what is faster, a horse or a duck, uh, you're gonna see a very, very similar response coming back. It's just not coming back in a sort of chat type mode. And of course I can do more complicated things. I could do things like uh, get code back. So I can say, right, write me some TypeScript that will generate the next number in a Fibonacci sequence. Let's see what that comes back with comes back with the Fibonacci. It's going with the classic kind of recursion based one. And if n is less than two, return n. Otherwise it's recursively going to call itself Fibonacci n minus one, Fibonacci n minus two, which is, is correct. And then it's using the kind of uh, tick, tick, tick TypeScript kind of uh, sequence so that it's going to do that well with code generation. In fact, what I could do is I could go to Google Bard, which is their chat interface, and see how that would look with a little bit of styling. So if we go to bard.google.com, there's uh, Google Bard. If I type in that exact same prompt, write me some TypeScript that will generate a number in a Fibonacci sequence, it's going to give me the exact same response back. 
but it's going to have the code style. And so you can kind of see, okay, it's slightly different and we'll get it to do the uh, uh, using recursion. Let's just run that again and then we'll force it to get a similar response. And there you go. So it's coming back with Fibonacci and number, if the la, la. Again, it's not exactly the same code. You know, it's a creative system. It's going to come back uh, with different things. But a key thing is it's got that sort of TypeScript nice piece around that. And that is generated by these little ticks that you see here. You know, it's like tick, tick, tick TypeScript. And therefore, when you're in something like Bard, it will know that it needs to take those ticks and sort of pretty up a little bit and use the kind of uh, the highlighter. Okay, now that I've introduced the Playground Studio, we've interacted a little bit with Palm, we've done some code generation, we've asked it some Q&A type questions, and again, you can go and run your own things. I'm not gonna do a comparison between Palm and OpenAI in this video, I'll probably do another video at some point and show the differences between the two. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get out of the kind of uh, studio type mode or even barred mode, and what we're gonna do is actually interact directly with the API. So now you could be fooled a little bit here. So if I click on the view code there, you're gonna see it gives you an option for some Python code, which is cool because it's created a Python SDK. If you're a Python developer, just go use that SDK. It's nice and simple. But what you can kind of see is it hasn't generated a version. There's nothing like TypeScript or Rust or whatever. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can create it with TypeScript yourself. In fact, what we're gonna do is use Palm 2 to create its own client. And again, you could use the exact same technique for any other language, whether it's Rust, C Sharp, whatever, you know. And it sort of opens up the question, why do we need client SDK examples anymore now that we've got generative AI? Now, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use uh, the curl command. Now, the first thing that I'm going to say here before I can use this, I need to get my sort of bearer token from uh, gcloud. Now, I don't have gcloud SDK installed on my machine. Uh, but what I can do is I can do it via the console in my studio. So if I, if you look here, there's an activate cloud shell. And what that will actually do is create a cloud shell upon the G Cloud environment. So rather than me having to install the tools, then I can just open up uh, a shell and then I can essentially get it to, to run whatever I want. So I can just type in G Cloud uh, auth print access token. And I'm gonna have to blur this out, otherwise you're gonna steal my token. But uh, if I run that, uh, it's gonna come back with, uh, do you wanna authorize this? I'm gonna say yes. And then uh, as soon as it does that, it's gonna print out my access token. And again, you won't be able to see that because I'll blur out bits so that you can't actually uh, steal my token. But there you go, I have now got the API access token that I need. So I'm gonna close this so that you can't see that token anymore. And now, uh, if I come back into view code, that means if I go into this curl command, I am gonna be able to put in this endpoint in here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this for a second, and I'm gonna bring up my terminal because I wanna just shape that command a little bit and before I paste it into my shell. So I've got an empty directory at the moment, as you can kind of see. So I'm just gonna create a new file, I'm gonna call it chris.sh. I'm not gonna run it as an sh, but I just want something uh, simple I can paste that code into. So I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna paste that curl command in here, uh, which is cool, and you should be able to see all of that there. So first thing that you can kind of see there is it's pulled in this API already. So I've got API endpoint, so it's just essentially uh, setting a variable in the shell. And then I've got project ID is equal to Chuck Hello Palm, which is the one that I've created. There's a couple of things I need to fix up to make this work. So if I was just to run this script there, you're gonna get some errors such as gcloud command not found. And the reason that that's not gonna be found is what I said earlier. Remember, I don't have gcloud installed, whereas it was installed on my cloud shell. So what I wanna do is replace this piece of code here 
right, which is doing the G Cloud call. And I just want to paste in that bearer token that I had from my G Cloud shell instance that I had earlier. So I'm just going to paste that in here like this. Again, I'll blur at the end of that so you can't steal my token. And now paste that back into my terminal. You're going to find that it's just coming back with nothing. And the reason it's coming back with nothing is there's a slight error in the API that is listed there. And again, this might change over time, but you can kind of see here in this, it's got publishers Googles and then it's my model ID. I just need to put the word models in there. So once that's in, we're in a good space. And all that's really happening is it's gonna need your project ID, which I've set up here, so chuck hello palm. So again, that's why we created that project earlier. It's gonna need the model, which is text bison 001. Again, if we were doing chat, it would be chat bison uh, 001. That's where it's gonna paste it in there. And then of course, obviously I had to make that change to put models in there. So now if I copy and paste this here, let's clear this out and then uh, run the same command you're gonna see it's gonna come back with, there you go, TypeScript, Fibonacci, blah, blah, blah. And of course, if I come back into my VS Code and then I just change uh, the content here, so maybe I write something like, what is faster, a horse or a duck? And then I just save that, copy that. Let's clear it out there and run that again. There we go, it's back to thinking that a horse can go faster than a duck which is fine, you know, each large language model to its own. So as I said, we're doing pretty good there, uh, which is cool, but we don't have a TypeScript client library to make this work. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the Palm model to create the TypeScript code that we need. So all we need to do is, let's first of all just do an npm init, and then that's gonna create me a nice little Node.js project, so I'm done there. And I want this to be TypeScript, so I'm gonna do a TSS init as well, and then that's gonna create me uh, my nice little kind of TypeScript piece. And then I need to install Axios because I'm gonna be making a call, so I'm just gonna put that in my dependencies. And when I instruct, this later on, I'm just gonna ask it to do Axios. So we'll just do uh, Axios, that's now in my package dependency, so we're good. So now all I'm gonna do is take that entire script that I pasted here, and again, this is bad practice what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna pass in uh, that API key, but you know, uh, you know, live and uh, have some fun. And what we will do is get Google Bard. I could get the Palm 2 Studio to do this, but I'll do Palm, because I think it's a prettier code. And then what I'm gonna say is given the following curl command and then I'm gonna pass it. I'm gonna put some ticks in here and then I'm gonna pass in this command I'm gonna say write me some node.js in TypeScript that will make this call using Axios you can see it's generated the TypeScript code. Now, of course, if I wanted to, I could do the same within uh, Vertex here. So I could just change this here and then hit the submit button and it will also generate the code here, which is, but uh, I think the, got the barred version is slightly nicer formatted. So what I will do is click on the copy code here. I'm gonna come back into Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna create myself a brand, let's close that. I'm gonna create myself a brand new index at ts. We're gonna paste that in. I'm gonna hit save. Notice I'm not changing anything here. I've just pasted this fully in. And then I'm gonna go ts node index ts. And I have no idea if this is gonna work straight off, but let's see. And there you go. Prediction successful content. A horse is faster than a duck, blah, blah, blah. So there we go. Google Bard in that case, but I could have used, you know, which is Palm model underneath that. But again, I could just pull that from the vertex code, generated the code perfectly, perfectly. And then I've just pasted it in and it works. And again, you can use that exact same technique if you want to create Rust code or if you want to create um, any other piece of code, C sharp, you name it, doesn't matter, right? Um, so what have we proved there? Do you know what? Palm's pretty good at generating code there as well. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you find it useful and I'll catch you on the next one.